Hello folks, my name is Alex Booms. I'm a commercial sales trainer with Case IH. Here in a Maxim cab today to review the Active Drive 8 transmission and to go over some of the features that it has. So once you get the monitor booted up, the first step you're going to want to do to set up some of these features is click this gear icon here. And this will bring you into the transmission settings. Um, and that's seen here in this tab. And a couple of things we're going to go over. So Active Clutch 2 is also brake to clutch. So when we hit this drop down menu here, you can see that we've got off, low, medium, and high. And what the different sense, what the different with low, medium, high is, is in regards to sensitivity. So low sensitivity requires low pressure on the brakes and high sensitivity requires high pressure on the brakes. So me personally, having driven some of these machines and, and how they respond, I like to run it in the low setting. So we can go ahead and set that there. The next thing we're gonna talk about is start off gear or SOG as it's referred to in the operator's manual. So to set this, this is actually already set where I would personally set it at B4, but to make an adjustment to that, when we click it, it brings up the range that we can begin in. And you can see here we have a choice between A, B, and C range. So I'm gonna go ahead and click B range. And then you also have a selection of what gear you wanna start on. I always pick B4 because it puts you right in the middle of B range and it puts you right in the middle of the transmission. It's a great place to start whether you're gonna start on roading down the field, doing some chore work, loader work, or if it's in the field already and you're starting your day, um, just to be in a decent uh, gear as far as uh, speed goes. The next feature we're gonna talk about is smooth shift. So that's up here, this drop down here, off, on, and auto. So off and on should be pretty self-explanatory as far as what they do in regards to sh smooth shift. And what smooth shift is doing is it's rev matching the engine to the transmission, almost like floating gears in a semi where it wants to those the transmission and the engine to match perfectly to create a smooth shift. So if it's off, it's gonna shift however you tell it to, wherever you're at in the power band, whatever the, your ground speed may be. If it's on, it's gonna rev match to make that shift smooth. But if you put it in auto, and this is where I would have it set, is, is it runs smooth shift when you're roading, but the minute that you engage the PTO, it abandons smooth shift. Now the reason it abandons it when you're in PTO is because with PTO, you're setting a desired engine speed. And regardless of what your ground speed is, is if you have to change gears with that PTO engaged, you don't want it to either rev up or rev down to make that shift smoother if it compromises the PTO speed. So the last feature we're gonna talk about here on the screen is the memory shuttle. So memory shuttle is either on or off. And what the memory shuttle allows you to do is when you shuttle from forward to reverse gear, it remembers the gear that you left off in. So instead of what you would maybe see on an active drive four transmission, where if you're in ninth forward and you go to reverse, it goes to ninth reverse. Uh, so it goes one for one, so ninth forward, ninth reverse, so on and so forth. Memory shuttle allows you to determine what gear you want to be in moving forward and what gear you want to be moving in reverse, and it simply remembers what gear you left off in. This is great for loader work. If you're going in and out of piles and want a uh, faster speed in the forward and a slower speed in reverse, you simply hit memory shuttle on, and then that way when you're shuttling back and forth, it'll pick up and leave off in the same gear with the direction that you had, you had previously had. The next feature we're gonna talk about is auto shift. F the buttons are found down here on the armrest and you have an auto shift for road mode and an auto shift for field mode. Here on the column, when we press one of those, you can see the icon in the center comes up and says auto, and then it shows us the upper limit and the lower limit for the gear set that we're gonna be operating in. Same as if I push field mode, you can see that it tightens up. It goes to a four gear set versus a gear set that's almost more than double that. To give that wider range of being able to come from a complete stop up to roading speed and back to a complete stop and up to a roading speed once again. And then field mode allows you that ability to work within a field environment and have slight gear changes that auto shift as needed depending on field conditions. The Active Drive 8 also has a couple of ways to change the direction of the tractor and also to select the desired gear. So the two ways you can change direction are either via the column mounted shuttle shifter or here on the grip by either pressing the forward arrow or the reverse of arrow for the desired direction. Then when it comes to shifting gears, you can either press the rabbit up for a single gear up 
or you can press and hold and it'll climb through the gear set until it reaches the desired gear. Same thing with shifting down. You can single press a button to shift down one gear or press and hold to get it to shift through multiple gears. The D-clutch button here on the back allows you to jump ranges. So if I'm in B6 or and I want to go to C, I can jump over to C1 without having to go to B7 and B8. So now we're just going to kind of run through some of these settings in, in, in reality as, as opposed to sitting in the shop. So I'm going to come back here to the gear set to access a lot of these settings again. And when I go ahead and right now I'm going to push the clutch in, I'm going to go to active clutch 2, I'm going to turn it off. So now when I let out the clutch and I, and I begin to go, when I depress the brakes, you can hear it start to stall out because that's not activated. But then if I put it to low, then again we can let off the clutch and I can lightly press the brakes and bring it to a stop. Now if I go to high, I take off the brake and then go to depress and it takes a little bit more effort. I know it's hard to see through the camera, uh, but we'll go ahead and turn that back to low. Smooth shift, uh, we're going to leave an auto for now. Memory shuttle, we'll go ahead and demonstrate that really quick. So right now if I pop it into reverse, it goes to B2 because B2 was the last gear I was in for reverse. And if I go back to forward, it goes back to B4 because that's what I was just in in the forward gear. So even though they're super close together, you can space that out between uh, a forward and reverse gear depending on your application. So we're going to go ahead and pull out onto the road. So I'm going to mainly shift here. And you see I'm in B6, but if I want to jump to C1, I can press the D-clutch button and the upshift, and now I'm in C1. So now we're going to talk about a few different ways that the direction can be changed here in the Actor Drive 8. So obviously you have the traditional method of your column-mounted shuttle lever for both forward and reverse. You have the two buttons here for forward and reverse on the grip. And then also on the loader joystick here, this top button right here uh, can also be done for directional changes, but you can't select forward or reverse. It simply does the opposite of whatever you're in. So here I'm gonna go ahead and hit forward, gonna roll away. And then if I hit this button here, we start to go in reverse. And if I hit it again, we'll go back to forward. So you also have shift up and shift down and a D-clutch button here on the joystick. So what's great about that is if I'm doing a lot of loader work, my hand can stay on this loader joystick the entire time. I can change directions with this button and I can make gear selections and range selections with the three buttons on the back, making it super convenient to where if I'm doing a ton of loader work, my hand can stay right here the entire time without having to make this transition back and forth for a long period of time. So the other thing too that can be done is pressing and holding the button will continue to shift gears up continuously as well as a single stroke will shift a gear up or down and pressing and holding it down will continue to shift down until I release. And that's a few different ways to make it changed. It's just all operator preference and application dependent as far as what gear selection or directional selection makes the most sense at that time.